Hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the video. This is gonna be a bit different than what we usually do. Right now I'm just going to explain fundamentally why I support Donald Trump and why I will be voting for him and why I think that you should too. And I know that many of you probably uh, will also be voting for Trump, maybe you already have, but I thought that it might be useful to make a video articulating why he's the best choice so that you can send it to your friends or family members who aren't voting or who just aren't voting for Trump. Um, so you can have a better idea of what to say if someone asks you why you're supporting Trump, etc. And if you're one of those people who don't support Trump, but you're still here, you're still watching, like, Seriously, thank you for that. I love that. I would also love it if you watched all the way through. Just hear me out. I really, I'm just trying to extend an olive branch here. And I know that there's a lot of bad stuff in the media about him, uh, that you've heard about him, and you probably have already developed an opinion of him. And that's totally fine. Like, I'll be totally transparent with you right now in that I am a conservative. I do support Donald Trump, and I did in 2016 as well, even though I wasn't old enough to vote for him at the time. But I'm not going to try to sell you on conservatism, which might sound counterintuitive because Donald Trump is running as a Republican. Um, he's recently described himself as conservative. And even even I would say that he is conservative, but I would also argue that Donald Trump has actually changed what it means to be conservative in this country into something that is very good for our country. Uh, you might remember in 2016, we had to deal with lots of conservatives coming out against Trump. They were the never Trump conservatives. And while some of this was because of his character and rhetoric or his general deviancy from what we regard as presidential behavior. I don't know. I would say most of it was and is because he doesn't actually embody the conservative or more accurately the neoconservative worldview that we've had for the last few decades in this country. And that was one of the biggest attacks that came from the establishment, the establishment conservatives. You know, Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, they pointed out the fact that Donald Trump was a Democrat for decades, that he'd given money to Democrats. And they were basically saying, hey, how can we nominate this guy as a Republican when he isn't even on board with what we've cemented as the Republican platform? And that's the point. And that's what is just great about Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump isn't a Republican in the sense of the 1990s or 2000s, even the 2010s. And that was something that was very eye-opening to me as I've learned more about the history of our country and the evolution of the political parties. I realized like, wow, when the Democrats talk about Republicans as the party that sells out for Wall Street and the military industrial complex, they're actually kind of right. And this was largely because of George Bush Sr. who declared that America's post-Cold uh, post War imperative was to spread democracy to the rest of the world and to open our borders, uh, to achieve an open society. And the results of that have been terrible. We've destabilized the Middle East, countless lives lost in the process. We've allowed for big business to collude with government to crush small businesses into the ground, send our jobs overseas. We've been told that we should be okay with this because it leads to countries like China theoretically embracing democracy, that turned out to not be true, and also because it will lead to us being able to theoretically purchase goods at a lower cost, which all other costs accounted for turned out to be false as well. So that was actually a very significant epiphany for me, realizing like, if I were voting in 1992, I'd straight up probably have voted for Bill Clinton. Unless, of course, there was a former White House communications director running too, then he would have gotten my vote for sure. But the point is that I'm trying to make Donald Trump has literally changed the paradigm of the two-party system in American politics. He has realigned it such that the Republican Party has been forced to compromise on positions that hurt the American people, but that made money for Washington and, and career Republican politicians, right? And he has simultaneously taken the moral positions from the Democrats, which has forced them to implicitly embrace the positions formerly taken by the Republicans simply to be in opposition to Trump. I saw a graphic on Twitter the other day that perfectly summarizes this, so I'll put it up on screen and explain it. So before Donald Trump, the positions of the Republican Republican Party that were moral were that they were pro-life, they supported low taxes, they supported law and order. And politics is all about signaling and selling morality. That's why both parties try to reduce everything to arguments of morality. So if you listen to the liberal media, they'll tell you, well, pro-life isn't about protecting unborn children, it's actually about controlling women's bodies. Low taxes isn't about allowing Americans to keep more of what they earn, it's about letting big business get away with not paying their fair share. Law and order, that's not about keeping Americans safe so they can live their lives in peace and do as they please, it's about militarizing the police so they can harass minorities. And since the vast majority of the media, Hollywood, in academia are left wing. Uh, these moral obfuscations from the left are pretty common. I'm sure you've heard them a thousand times before by now. Um, but conversely, the Democrats had a few very important moral positions before Donald Trump as well, mainly that they were anti-war, they were for the working man, uh, and they were for Main Street, which is just small businesses. And the Republicans would do the same thing to try to obfuscate these positions, uh, granted with less influence, but still, you know, they'd say being anti-war isn't about being anti-war, it's about letting the people thousands of miles away from us take our freedom. Hey! Being for the working man is actually about regulating businesses into the ground, and being against Wall Street is the same idea. And I do think there's some truth to that with regard to regulating businesses, but really the difference is that the Democrats used to be in support of protecting American workers through immigration policies and trade policies that put the American worker first. And so Donald Trump, a former Democrat, comes along and has now literally realigned the two-party system to where the conservative base is now pro-life, for low taxes, for law and order, and now also anti-war for the working man and small businesses by 
by securing our borders and bringing jobs back to America and cutting regulations that kill small businesses. And because of that, the Democrats have now embraced the immoral positions that hurt the American people. They are now in the pocket of Wall Street. They are now in favor of the endless wars in the Middle East. They are now in favor of the military industrial complex. They are now in favor of opening up the borders and granting amnesty to illegal immigrants. They're in favor of unrestricted abortion access. They're totally okay with promoting all of this in their media, in the schools, and censoring people who try to speak out against it. And if there's one thing that you take away from this, the one thing that I really, really want you to think about more than anything is that are we really going to pretend that it's all a coincidence? Like all of the sudden, the entire media, Hollywood, the ruling class, Wall Street, the Washington establishment, the FBI, CIA, all of those agencies, all of the bureaucracy over which Trump is supposed to have control, the Democrats, many of the Republicans, especially in the first half of his term, are we really going to pretend that all of the sudden those people have our best interest at heart? That all of the sudden, all of the people we know intuitively to be corrupt, to sell us out to make more money for themselves and to gain more power, all of the sudden they just decided Donald Trump, a man who was literally taking the moral positions from both parties to put the American people first, a man who was taken on Wall Street, the military industrial complex, big pharma, all of the sudden, those people are just going to be honest with us? That all of the sudden, the most powerful people in the world, the people who control what information is put on our screens and into our minds, that they're just going to establish a consensus that Donald Trump is actually bad and that they're going to be honest with us about that? I don't buy that for a second. The unfortunate reality of American politics that we all know is that no one ever got rich shilling for the American people. It has never happened. So do you think that it's possible that if, say, there were someone, a billionaire reality TV star who really doesn't know a whole lot about politics, he doesn't speak with a large level of sophistication, but he does have instincts, he does love his country, he also has a tremendous ego and would love nothing more than to be the guy that spearheads the fight to drain the corruption from our political system, do you think it's possible that if that happened, the people pulling the strings would do everything in their power to convince you that he's evil, that he's working against you, he's working with Russia, whatever they can think of, it doesn't matter. Because the people who have profited from making our country and our families weak are now using their influence to try to convince you that actually they can be trusted. And I don't buy that for a second, especially because if you go back and you watch what Donald Trump has been saying for decades, you can watch him on Oprah, mainstream media interviews, whatever. The message has always basically been, I am sick of watching our stupid leaders let our country get ripped off while they make money from it. And he has been saying that for decades. And that's basically the message of his whole campaign. He said, we are going to put America first. And again, he doesn't read political philosophy. He doesn't have the training of a politician, but he does know what has to be done to put the American people first. And they know that he knows that too. And that is why they have been firing on all cylinders for the last five years to stop this man. There was a reason that even his own administration has been against him and trying to subvert him, in addition to all the negative media coverage. And as far as I can tell, could be for two reasons. One, he's actually fighting against the establishment and for the American people. Or two, he's actually just the worst, which would then beg the question, why did they wait until he ran for president to start treating him this way? Like he used to be adored. He was a cultural icon, but then he ran for president. He lost hundreds of millions of dollars, even billions by some estimates. He sacrificed his relaxed and luxurious lifestyle. He could have just retired, but no, he made all those sacrifices. And for what? For you, I seriously believe that with all of my heart. The only reason a man like Donald Trump, who had everything he could ever ask for, would ever sacrifice that is because he loves his country, he loves the people in his country, and he has a tremendous ego. It adds up perfectly, in my opinion. And that in itself is the biggest case for Donald Trump. He represents the American people. Washington, D.C. has betrayed us for decades. They have sent our jobs overseas. They have sent our young men and women to die in the sand for nothing. They've allowed drug companies to, to make billions of dollars getting Americans addicted to opiates. They've crushed small businesses into the ground while taking money from big businesses. These people are corrupt, they're sociopaths, and they're acting exactly as we'd expect them to act if someone were to actually pose a threat to the status quo. They are melting down, they are scrambling, and they are panicking. And it fills me with incredible optimism. And if I talk about it too long, I'll probably start crying unironically. So in the meantime, we're going to talk about some of the specific issues for this election and some of the things that people say against Trump. Uh, but first, we have to thank our sponsors for this video. I put together a pretty epic commercial, so Jamie, pull the clip up. Yo, what's up boys? You know what's epic? Being a boy. You know what's not epic? Not having a gun. Problem solved. Now we got a gun. You know what we don't have? Access to cheap ammo. Why is that? The pandemic, the election, the race riots. People are buying up ammo. And so what do you need? You need a bullet that can shoot forever and ever. And you know what else would be cool? If you could just do training in your own house. You don't even have to go to the range. You don't have to deal with all the FUDs, all the boomers, all the LARPers. We've actually got a product that can solve that. It's called the iTarget Pro system for dry fire training. What do they give you? They give you this epic sled. They give you a bullet that shoots lasers forever. Allow me to explain. 
you take your pistol or your rifle. They even have them in 223556. You've got all your major pistol calibers, 9mm, 10mm. You've got your 38 special for revolvers, whatever you want. Then you simply insert the forever bullet into the chamber of the pistol. We're good to go. Then you simply line up and then. See that? That was a bullseye. Another 10. 8. Nine. The point being that it helps you anticipate the recoil of the firearm. You know who does dry fire training? The US military. Law enforcement. Epic guys, this could be you. Hold on. Did someone say do it again one-handed? Okay. Nine. Did someone say do it from even farther of a distance? Okay. And then we're gonna cut it and I'm gonna be over here. This will defend. Seven. Eight. Eight. Now what's the benefit of being able to do this in the privacy of your own home? Train for every situation. I'm training for every situation that I could possibly be in. More situations. What about, because you never know what situation you're going to be in. So here's one. They disarm you. They take your gun. It's over there. They're like, do as many push-ups as you can or else we're going to kill you. Now you're like, oh no, you're down. You're doing push-ups. They're going to kill you. But wait a minute. Ah, ah, no. Not ah, funny anything to say about it. So check the link out in the description, get yourself one of these epic systems, they're a friend of the channel, it's well worth the investment, well worth the time, very epic, iTarget Pro, in the description. Let's go! Can you tell that I have fun doing those? Um, but anyways, to get back to what we were talking about, you might have noticed that I say the American people a lot when talking about stuff like this. And there's a reason for that, and the reason for that is that our government exists first and foremost for us. It's like Abraham Lincoln said in the Gettysburg Address, a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. We're not talking about a world government where all seven billion of us have to follow one set of rules. No, we're talking about Americans. We pay for our government and they exist to look out for us, first and foremost. That is their whole purpose. The American government exists to prioritize the interests and well-being of the American people. This is a completely common sense and not at all controversial idea. And this isn't because we don't want to get along with other countries or because we don't want to help them out. Of course we do. But the problem is that we can't even take care of ourselves. We have have millions of homeless people, we have single mothers, our family structure is deteriorating, our healthcare system is a total disaster, wages have been stagnant for decades until recently under Donald Trump, but the point is that we have a lot on our plate and we are hurting. And so before we start thinking about helping other people, we need to focus on our people first, because if we don't do that, then pretty soon we won't even be in a good enough position to help anybody else out anyways. And the reason that that's deemed wrong by the media is that a lot of very powerful people make a lot of money by lobbying for open borders, both in terms of immigration and trade policy. And the American worker does not benefit when we bring in millions of people to compete for his job. Big business does because of simple labor economics, which is that when you have more people competing for the same job, you can pay them less to do it. And at the same time, we've been sending our manufacturing jobs over to benefit countries like China. And so we have American workers competing for fewer jobs against more immigrants from third world countries because big business makes a ton of money from it. And we'll talk about the economy because that's kind of the most important issue typically with elections and our borders are directly related to that. And also to our country as a whole, like our whole purpose. Because if we don't secure our borders, what's the point of even having a country? Like, what are we even doing here? Are we just dwelling? No, there's more to a country than that. And so we have to secure our borders not only to protect the American worker from unnecessary foreign competition that has been lobbied for by big business, but we also have to have a country. We have to have a country, so we have to have secure borders. Donald Trump is in favor of all of this, whereas Joe Biden is not. Joe Biden wants to decriminalize border crossings so that anyone can come in. He wants to give citizenship to tens of millions of illegal immigrants who are here illegally, along with preventing them from being deported. And he wants to get rid of all the immigration orders that Trump has enacted while in office. And that's just not fair to the American people. It's not that we don't want these people here, but it isn't fair that our economy has to suffer since a majority of these immigrants, both legal and illegal, are on welfare programs, that on the net, they take more from the economy than they contribute in taxes and that our workers have to compete with them for jobs to get paid less because our government has sold them out when they're supposed to be working for them. 
Trade policy is related to this as well. Joe Biden supported the trade policies that sent American jobs overseas and hollowed out towns all throughout the country. I mean, why do you think the Rust Belt went for Trump? We're tired of it. We're tired of being sold out. We're tired of being lied to. So yeah, we're going to send in President Cheeto just as a middle finger to the Washington establishment. And he's actually doing a great job for us. There's nothing good about draining money and jobs from the American economy because experts tell you that it will bring democracy to the world and help us in the long run. Guess what? We've done it for decades. People are hurting. You were wrong. Stop speaking forever. Like you, you, you have no credibility. And of course, the economy under Trump was roaring. We all know that setting all sorts of records, lowest unemployment for all different groups of people, record high workforce participation, stock market was great, breaking records, manufacturing jobs were coming back. And then even after the pandemic struck, our recovery has been better than all of the experts predicted, whereas Joe Biden's economic plan would set the country back. Joe Biden represents the administrative state. He represents the bureaucracy. And literally what that means is a bunch of losers sit in Washington at a desk making like 80 grand a year and they sit there and they try to tell you how you should be running your small business. And they're never up for re-election because they were never elected, but they were put there to sit and soak up taxpayer money while hurting your small business and helping mega corporations take up more of the market share. And that's why they're giving their support to Joe Biden. And that's why it's been proven that he would be a disaster for the economy because the economy does well when the American people are put first. And Joe Biden is simply not interested in that. I mean, the guy has been in Washington for 50 years. He's made millions of dollars. How? How do you make millions of dollars in politics? How does that work? At least Trump made his money in business and then he actually lost money when he got involved in politics. Do you think that 50 years later, Joe Biden's suddenly going to decide to stop making deals that benefit himself and his friends and family at your expense? Absolutely not. His record is clear. Same thing with foreign policy. Joe Biden voted to get involved in Iraq. He bragged about it. Biden wants to keep us in the Middle East. He wants to continue the forever wars because he's a part of the military industrial complex. It really is that simple. He's not campaigning on bringing our soldiers home because he doesn't want to. That's not a priority to him. His friends make lots of money when your sons and daughters die, but it's supposed to be okay because, hey, they'll give you a flag and tell you that, oh, your freedoms are safe or something, right? I don't buy it. Trump is reducing our presence in the Middle East. He's brokering peace deals. He's bringing peace to a region of the world that was actually pretty stable until we got involved because we wanted to spread democracy and make a lot of money in the process for a handful of people. And to me, all other issues are second to this. These issues take precedence because if we don't know what we're doing as a country, we don't have secure borders, we don't have an economy that allows for people to, to live and have families. We're taking trillions of dollars from American families and just, just yeeting them along with their children thousands of miles away. If we can't even get that together, how are we ever supposed to solve something like climate change? If you think that reducing our carbon footprint is a good idea, okay, well, you have to understand that we will never be able to do that until we solve these other problems. Because when people are hurting, when they're being exploited, do you think they really care about the impact that they're having on the environment, their carbon footprint? They don't even know what that means. The solution to that is innovation. America used to be about innovation, but we can't have innovation if the government is going to come in and regulate that innovation into the ground because they've used their propaganda machines to tell you that it's actually in your best interest. And that's, that's all it is. It's all propaganda. I mean, do you remember when they tried to tell us for two years that Donald Trump was a Russian asset? Why don't you hear about that anymore? Because it was a PSYOP. They were trying to appeal to this long-held conception of American foreign policy that Russians equal bad. And, and then like, yeah, okay, hello, 1980s department. Uh, can we get our foreign policy back? It just wasn't true. So they moved on to the next thing. And that's all they'll do forever. And if Trump loses, they'll tell you, okay, we made a mistake, but it's okay. Let's just make sure that something like that never happens again. Shh. And then it'll all continue. The establishment will return to business as usual. They will profit. You and your families will suffer. It really is that simple. And I get that his tweets are off-putting. I get that he talks like he's giving a presentation that he didn't prepare for the night before. I get that. But frankly, those are inconsequential when compared to the bigger picture. All of that is insignificant compared to what he actually represents here and what this election seriously comes down to, which very simply put is that a vote for Donald Trump is a vote for putting the American people first. And a vote for Joe Biden is a vote for returning to the status quo of putting the Washington establishments and the ruling class first at the expense directly of the American people. Be smart, folks. Hey, guys, if you like this video, you just got to share it. Share it with your friends and family members, people who are apolitical, not that interested in politics or voting, people who are maybe undecided, maybe leaning towards Joe Biden, whatever. You just got to share it because these are issues that Donald Trump has taken from both parties that are correct. And he is now trying to unify us as a country under these issues. And the only thing standing in the way of that is the left. These issues are bipartisan. We want to put the American people first. That's bipartisan. That's not controversial. They're making it controversial because it stands in the way of the ruling class and the Washington establishment carrying out business as usual. That is literally what it comes down to. 
So please share this video. If you want to leave a thumbs up, comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. That's also very much appreciated, but share this video. It is imperative. I implore you to share this video. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.